Hey everyone, it's Jacob. With the whole coronavirus thing that's going on, a lot of people are being forced to work remotely, to work from their homes, coffee shops, wherever. And so I wanted to just share a couple quick tips on how you can lead um, and effectively lead and manage these types of remote and flexible teams. I've been running this kind of a team for probably, I don't know, 10, 12 years now. There are 10 of us. So if you work for a large company, my team is probably much smaller than yours, but it's still something that I've been doing for around a decade now, and I've worked with and advised a lot of organizations on how to effectively um, lead these types of remote teams. So I just wanted to share a couple pieces of advice from things that I've observed and things that I've learned over the years that might help you lead your virtual or remote team. So a couple things to keep in mind. I think the first, uh, probably one of the most important thing is, is to set clear guidelines and expectations. In other words, having a discussion with your team and saying, look, I get what's going on, but working from home doesn't mean that you're just kind of, you know, watching TV all day, relaxing, doing whatever. Set clear guidelines and expectations, right? I mean, I still expect the work to be delivered. I'd like us to be uh, online at least for two hours a day overlapping so that we can communicate and chat. I mean, whatever those guidelines are, make sure you have that conversation with your team so that there's no miscommunication. Okay, so set those guidelines. When do you expect your team to be available? Um, when, how do you expect uh, you know, the quality of work? You still want the same quality of work. You still expect them to perform at their optimal level. So have that discussion with your team so that it's not just kind of like, you know, you're working from home, do whatever you want. Because we want to avoid that. That's going to create a lot of tension and problems in the company. Uh, I think the second tip that's going to be really important for you to make sure uh, that you have is the right technologies in place. You can't lead and you can't work with a virtual or a remote team if you don't have the technologies in place. So what are those technologies? It might be video conferencing tools. I use Skype with my team because it's easy, it's free. We use Asana for project and task management. You might use um, Slack, right? Whatever it is, make sure you have the right tools at your disposal so that you can maintain that effective communication and collaboration with your team. I think another tip that's gonna be really useful and helpful for you is to make sure that um, you give your team more autonomy, decision-making power, and trust. This is gonna be a big test for you as a leader if you can trust your people. Because usually when you're all in the office and you see people working, you're kind of like, okay, I know what you're doing. And so through when you have a, a virtual team, it's gonna be very tempting for you as a leader if you're not used to this to be like, hey, are you working? What are you doing? Are you online? I don't see that little, you know, the little green button on your uh, your notifications saying that you're online, trust your people, okay? If, if there are issues with quality of work or things aren't getting done on time, then you can start to step in and have that conversation. But once you set these clear guidelines and expectations at the very beginning, you should be able to treat your employees like adults. They're grown-ups. So have a little bit of that trust in them that they will be able to deliver uh, great quality work, um, give them the autonomy, give them this, the decision-making power, and it's gonna be a true test for you as a leader if that's something that you're gonna be able to do. Another tip that I encourage you to uh, explore with your team, and this is true regardless, but I think especially in virtual teams, try to actually get to know your employees as individuals, right? Not just as workers. Uh, do video calls with them. Um, you know, you'll get to learn a little bit more about them. You'll get to see the environments in which they work. Try to get to know your employees a little bit better to build that closer relationship with them so that they don't feel isolated so that they don't feel like they are purely just cogs, so they don't feel like they're disengaged from the company. And as a leader, it's gonna be really important for you to kind of make sure that you build that that rapport, that relationship, that, that trust. So get to know your employees a little bit. I try to do video calls with my team whenever I can because we're remote and you know, we don't jump on the calls and immediately start talking about work. You know, how is your day? How are things going? Like, well, get to know your employees a little bit, like a human being, right? Um, so those are some tips that I encourage you to practice, uh, maybe a couple others. I encourage you to use video calls whenever you can instead of just audio. You want to see your people, you want to see them face to face, right? That's always important. Um, so I think those are some really great places to start and that will really help you lead and work with remote teams. Four simple things plus that, you know, the one bonus one that I mentioned around doing, uh, doing video calls. Um, Maybe one other one is also do infrequent check-ins, right? I mean, you can schedule meetings throughout the day, but it's okay. Like my team and I, we just have like an open uh, Skype channel where we just share fun things like what's going on, what are you doing? Not necessarily work-related, but it keeps that kind of water cooler effect 
so that uh, we can just talk to each other, say hi, um, just talk about whatever's on your mind that's not necessarily work-related. So in a virtual environment, you obviously don't get that when employees um, are not in an office. So have some of that kind of casual discussion, banter. It's okay. Not everything needs to be work-related. You don't constantly have to be talking about projects and proposals. So if people want to share a little bit about what's going on in their lives, that's okay too. So as a leader, it's important for you to not just be okay with that, but to encourage that as well. So those are my tips for how you can lead a virtual or remote team effectively. Implement some of those. I think you'll start to see changes. Uh, if you have any other tips that you want to share, leave me a comment below. And if you are currently leading a remote or virtual team, I'd love to hear any advice that you have for other people who are um, just learning about this and just trying to experiment with this as well. So leave a comment below and let's create a really great resource that we can share around with other people. Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever in the world you are.